hello everyone welcome back to my channel today i am going to show you guys how to make a pet using object oriented programming the steps we're going to take to do this is we're going to make the pet model we're going to make an object for the pet and we're going to make it follow its owner if that's something you're interested in learning then keep watching so to start off we're obviously going to want to make the pet that you're going to work with so first things first we're going to need a humanoid root part so i'm just going to make this a little cube here and then we want to duplicate the cube to make our little pet and we're just going to put it a little bit more centered into here and we're going to make this pet pink and we're going to make the humanoid root part transparent and we also want to make the humanoid root part can collide false once we do that we're going to give our pet a face i think this one is pretty cute so there is our little pet face Side note, I am using this plugin that allows you to see the front point of your part. So you don't have to worry about where the front face is if you're trying to do things like make a pet. So once you have your pet part and your humanoid root part, then you're going to want to name this. It doesn't necessarily need to be named humanoid root part, but for usual naming conventions, I'm just going to make sure it is humanoid root part. And then this is your body. You can give it yours too. I might as well give it ears. I think this guy is a little pig. These are some weird looking ears, but we are going to work with it. Or maybe we'll just get a mesh of ears. Uh, model ears. Yeah, it's kind of cute. I'm just going to give him this. So here is your weird little pet. And we also want to make sure that we weld all of this together. So I'm going to select all of these parts here and I'm going to create weld. So now we have a weld inside of all of these and we are also going to want to group it together and name it pet. And then in here, we are going to set the primary part to the humanoid root part and we are going to add a humanoid into the pet as well. So now we have this wonderful little pet that we are going to name Piggy. So now that we have a Piggy, we are going to get into object-oriented programming and go into replicated storage and insert a new module that we're going to name Pet. In order to make a pet object, we're going to start off by putting here local pet is a table and under here we need to index the table. So pet dot underscore underscore index equals pet. And once we do that, we want to do function pet.new. And in here we are just going to put the model of a pet, so pet model. And after that, we are going to put another table in here, local pet equals that. And next we want to set the meta table. So set meta table pet this not to get confused, we're putting this line, this pet here, and then we are going to put this pet into here to set the meta table. Next, we're going to want to set the pet as a variable under the pet object. So pet, the lowercase pet, dot model equals pet model. And I also just want to get the humanoid here too. So we're just going to put pet dot humanoid equals pet model wait for a child humanoid. And then we also want to return the pet. So this is how you make a basic object using object-oriented programming. And then we are just going to return the pet as well so that we can require this outside of this module. So now that we have a basic pet object, we obviously want it to be a little bit more lively and move around. So I'm going to show you how you can move objects using the humanoid. So in order to move an object using a humanoid, we want to do function pet move to as our way to make our pet move around. In the parameter of the function, we're going to put a vector. And then in here, we are going to do pet.humanoid move to vec. Ooh, sorry, not pet.humanoid. We want to do self.humanoid move to vec. And now we have our first function inside of our pet object. So now we are going to require the pet object and watch it move around. So we're going to put a script into server script service. And here we're going to require the pet pet object equals require game dot replicated storage dot pet and we want to create a new pet so local piggy equals pet object new and in order to move the piggy we do piggy oh sorry we want to do pet object dot new piggy 
move two. Let's just put a random vector three here. So now if we go into test and we hit run, we're gonna back up a bit to watch it move. We're gonna hit run and we have an error. Index note with wait for child. Oh, we forgot to put the pet in here. So we want to put workspace.piggy into here. And now our pet is moving to the new direction. So now that we have a pet moving in a new direction, we're gonna make a pet that follows the player. So we're going to inherit this just to show off what inheritance is. So let me put player's pet here. And in here we're going to put local pet equals require script dot parent dot pet under the pet we want to create the new pet so we're gonna put players pet equals that and then we want to do set meta table players pet pet but we also want to index it as well so we want to index it players pet dot underscore underscore index equals players pet and then under here we want to do function players pet dot new under here we're going to put a table and then we want to set the meta table again oh sorry i forgot to put here <laughs> it does not a table it is pet.new but we want to put players pet here the capital one and then we want to return players pet now we have inherited this from the pet module which has this function move to in it which means that this also has move to in it as well and then in here we want to put the pet model again. We are going to set this player's pet owner to the first player that joins the game, just as an example case. So we want to put in here player's pet dot owner equals the character that we're going to put in the game, which is going to be me. And then what we want to do is create a new function called function player's pet follow owner. In here, we are going to put if self dot owner and self dot owner dot parent and self dot owner dot character and self dot owner dot character dot parent then because we want to check to make sure all of these things exist so we're going to want to get the humanoid root part from the character so we do local humanoid root part equals self dot owner dot character humanoid root part if humanoid root part then so after you get the humanoid root part you want to get the c frame of the humanoid root part because we are going to do an offset from that so that the pet follows the character a little bit behind them and not directly inside of them so local offset equals c frame dot new negative three zero three the three makes it go behind the character negative three would make it go in front of the character and then we want to put here self move to cf times offset dot position because we got the c-frame here and we're multiplying it by a different c-frame and then we want to get the position of those two c-frames when you move something based off of a c-frame it basically takes the local c-frame of the thing that you have and you offset it so that it always will stay in that position in the local space of the original c-frame so just to make the pet constantly follow the player we want to get run service because in here we are going to put run service dot stepped connect function and inside of the function we are going to put players pet follow owner so once we have that all together now we are going to replace this pet object with player pet object and piggy is now player pet object dot new return players pet okay now there we go and now we'll close and reopen this so then we have created piggy and now it is a player's pet object and now we're going to hit play and see if this guy will follow me So now my pet is following me around. And you could do so much more with this if you wanted. You could add health, you could add a leveling system. You could do so much with this player's pet object. That's basically how you would create a pet using object-oriented programming. Thank you for watching this video. If it was helpful for you, don't forget to subscribe and like and leave a comment on what tutorial you want to see next. Goodbye.